The following program contains images of an actual surgical procedure that may be graphic and disturbing. Parents are advised that these images may not be suitable for young children. Nearly 600,000 knee replacements each year in the U.S. So this is a very common procedure. And Dr. Fitzgerald, I know this is something you're quite adept at. Yeah, uh, every, I mean, I do both hip and knee replacement. Uh, between hips and knees, I do close to 500 a year. Uh, but let me show you what's going on here. So this, this is the end of her femur, the big bone in the thigh. Uh, and this is the top of the tibia, the big bone in the lower leg. And usually the cartilage surface over the bone is, is completely pristine and nice and white and shiny and kind of looks like this over here. But if you look on, you got a pick up for me? If you look, especially on the inside portion of her knee here, she's completely worn through the cartilage in the area. So that's just bone. There's no cartilage covering that area. Uh, so it's really, instead of two smooth surfaces, it's like two pieces of chalk that rub together and cause a lot of inflammation and pain. And then these are all what we call bone spurs or osteophytes uh, on the side of the knee, and we'll, we'll remove all that kind of as we go. So we're, we're getting ready to prepare the end of the femur. Um, so this guide goes up into the bone on the end of the femur, and then it, it sets the amount of bone in the angle that I'm going to cut the end of the bone at. Uh, so that we can uh, put the implant in the right position. So now we're getting ready. We're going to cut the end of the, her femur here, and it removes about nine millimeters of bone. So when everybody, I think, thinks about knee replacement, and it's a common question that I get in clinic, is how much of their knee that we're going to take out. Um, and it's not really like we remove the knee. You can really think of it as, as resurfacing the ends of the bone where the cartilage is worn out. While you're doing this, Dr. Fitzgerald, can you just tell us a little bit about some of the advancements in terms of the precision and accuracy that you're able to achieve now as opposed to um, many, many years ago? We definitely do it through smaller incisions uh, than we did previously. You know, the common terms that everybody throws around is what's called minimally invasive surgery. And everything that we do today would be considered minimally invasive to what was done 15 years ago. Um, and the implant design has definitely improved as our understanding of why knees fail over time. Uh, traditionally, why knee replacements fail over time. So we'll start with a five, Nassim. Uh, over time is the plastic wearing out and the current generation of plastic that we're using in the knee replacement looks great. I mean, the goal really is to get hopefully between 20 to 30 years uh, out of a knee replacement, uh, which is a, a great longevity for the device. And these are the, the bony cuts that we're going to begin to prepare uh, the shape of the end of the femur so the implant fits it. I'm guessing in the audience the right now, half of you are thinking, kind of. oh, I could never yeah. do that. And then the other half, can I apply to med school? This looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right. Uh, so now we kind of shape the end of the femur. We're going to cut what's called the box. Um, there's a mechanism in the implant that's kind of made to, do, to make up for your posterior cruciate ligament. And we're just kind of making room for that right now. But as, as you can see, it's a lot of, a lot of carpentry. The suction for me there, yeah. All right, you got a pickup for me to see? So that, that's the, the femur prep uh, at this point. We've made all the cuts uh, for the femur that we need to do to shape, uh, shape the bone for the implant. And now we're kind of getting the tibia forward. Um, so this is the top of the tibia here. Uh, and these are your meniscus here. 